Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a birthday card featuring a Halloween themed Curtis Liner Designs rubber stamp. I was thinking about ways to stretch my stamps and I really loved this little tiger from the Halloween release and haven't been able to use it in a couple months because I'd used it back on Halloween projects. But then I realized there was really nothing particularly distinguishing that like, screams Halloween about it other than that he's in a costume. But I thought it could be a really fun kids card and this could be work out well for a card for a little boy. We just had, you know, because little kids like to play dress up. They like to wear their Halloween costumes all year long if you let them. I'm sure my kindergartners would come to school in costumes if we only let them. And sometimes they do on days when they get to dress down. They come in like a tutu or something. And so I decided that I could use this little dressed up guy any time of year. And I'm stamping the rubber stamp in the My Favorite Things Black Licorice Hybrid ink. And you can get this stamp as a rubber stamp or it's sold individually as um, a digital stamp. So it's up to you how you'd want to purchase it. When I color the little tiger, I decide to use the YR65, 68, and YR07. And in this instance, the YR07 is going to be my darkest marker. I'm going to color the all parts of the tiger because for the stripes, I know that I can just layer the dark gray color on top of the orange and it will save me a little bit of time because trying to avoid the stripes would make coloring a lot slower. So I'm going to lay down an overall coat of the YR65, then I'm going to lay down some YR68 and blend them out and then add just a touch of the YR07 which is just a little bit more red and a little bit deeper of a color and then um, continue to blend it out from the YR 07 to the 68 back to the 65 and I'll do that all over the tiger and then for the skin colors I'm going to use some E00 and E50 and lay down the lighter color first which is the E50 and then add a little bit of the darker E00 to for just a little bit of shadows and with this, I usually just add, I decided to add the shadows right on the top where the costume is meeting up with his skin. And for the shadowing on the tiger, I generally added it to be a little bit darker towards the edges to give that kind of rounded effect. And um, as you can see here, I'm able to layer the color, the um, W7, right over the orange, as I mentioned before. Instead of using a true black, I went with the W7 just because I like that it's just a touch warmer and worked out well with the um, warm tone of the tiger, or the orange of the tiger, sorry. And I'm going to fussy cut this out. I decide when I fussy cut it out that instead of cutting right to the black line, I would leave a little bit of a white border. I think that this makes it a little bit easier because on the a lot of the Curtis Steiner Designs images, there's um, little pieces of fuzz around the edges, so it's not like really clear black lines. And um, so I just kind of like that look of the white border better. I'm going to be doing some stenciling with some distress inks. I first tape down my stitched rectangle panel to my Ranger craft sheet. Then I layer the stencil on top and use painter's tape to tape the stencil down. But I'm also using some micropore tape. The micropore tape I'm specifically using in the areas where the tape will be touching the paper because I have found that the micropore tape doesn't rip at my paper quite as much as the painter's tape in my experience. For the colors today, I'm going to be using peacock feathers, evergreen bow, and cracked pistachio. These are all in the blue-green family with the cracked pistachio probably being the most green, but evergreen bough is like a really dark greenish blue, and then cracked pistachio is a really light greenish blue, and then the peacock feathers is the most blue. So when peacock feathers in the bottom, evergreen bough in the middle, and then cracked pistachio on the top, and I just use the round foam blenders from Ranger and Tim Holtz and um, just smudge the ink on. I decided that I wanted to put a sentiment strip and rather than try to find a piece of paper of cardstock or for example that matches exactly with the colors I was using I thought why not just make my own by smushing some of the cracked pistachio ink right on a piece of cardstock so I literally just took my pad right to the paper and pressed it might use up a little bit of ink to do it that way 
but I figure I always just buy the refills when I buy them and I use mine so much I always have them on hand. Then I decided to stamp the sentiment from Lawn Fawn that says, have a roaring good birthday because I thought that worked out really well with the tiger. And so this sentiment is about as wide as the panel that I'm using. And I decide to trim off the edges of the cardstock after adhering it down so that way there isn't any um, little bit of area so that, you know, they're just perfectly flush. I'm going to lay the tiger on top with some foam tape just for a little bit of added dimension. As you see that when I did the stencils, I decided to offset it to the right a little bit because things generally tend to look better a little bit more offset. I think that it's harder when you try to center things because if you don't get exactly centered, it's a little bit more noticeable. So I'd rather purposely be off center and crooked than accidentally. And I also think that by popping it up, it um, makes the fussy cutting more worth it because it doesn't look like um, it's flush with the panel. Like kind of like, why is this one white piece of cardstock right over another, for example? I don't know if that quite makes sense, but... Um, I just like the look of fussy cutting with white borders with foam tape. Anyway, I'm sorry if that didn't really make sense. I wanted to add this birthday hat from Late But With Love to tie in the birthday saying. And I just colored that with some blue-green markers, uh, Copic markers, to match with the colors of Distress Ink that I'm using in the background. I decide to do the same thing with my background panel as I did with the sentiment panel and make it match, have matching cardstock just by taking the distress pad to the edges of a slightly bigger piece of cardstock. And this time I went with the peacock feathers to pull that color in because I pulled the cracked pistachio in on the sentiment and so then I went to the opposite end of the spectrum with the peacock feathers and pulled that in as the background color. And then once I mount that together that will be it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafty videos, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to leave you links to the products in the video description below, including to the Gerda Stutter Design Shop, where you can pick up this little cutie as a rubber stamp or as a digital stamp. Thanks for watching. Bye.